Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the United Summer Podcast. It is great to be here, and we've got back on the podcast today by popular demand. He was gone for a little while. It was tough to get him back, but we got him back for your enjoyment. Jacob Upton, everybody. I just begged Shane enough weeks in a row. He's like, fine, I'll have you back on. We Sorry. want you, Jacob. <laughs> and we've also got on the podcast today, very exciting, we got Joseph Murray. Glad to be on here. I'm excited. It's great to have you, bro. Great to have you on here. Um, definitely been an encouragement being your small group leader and having you week after week over the past three years. And uh, well, we even wanted to have you on. I think high school is such a unique time uh, specifically for the topic that we're going to talk about today, which is honoring your parents. Such a unique uh, time for that. Because I think a lot of students, they're coming into high school maybe as a freshman and really felt like, okay, relying on my parents for everything. And then high school is even a time where it's like, oh, starting to get a little more independence, getting the job. Maybe you can drive. You're learning more on your own. All of these things. And then college, maybe even a time when you're not living with them anymore, Mm -hmm. a lot of people. So high school, kind of this transitionary time, uh, but nonetheless still living under our parents' household. And uh, we know as Christians, we're called to honor our parents. So that's what we wanted to bring you on to talk about um, this topic of honoring your parents. I know we've talked about this a little bit, just even leading up to sitting down here, Mm -hmm. kept Shane in the dark so he doesn't know what's (laughs) coming. But uh, yeah, I mean, what questions do you have for us about honoring your parents? Kick us off here. Yeah, so you started off, uh, I I mean, kind of just for, you know, ground level, I just want to ask, like, when you're, like, even now talking, yeah, how to honor our parents, what does that even look like? What, like, what does the word honor even mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, in Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3, it talks about this, and this is what I like to call one of those bobblehead verses. And what I mean by that is this is one of those verses where when you read it, you're like, Mm. <laughs> and you agree with it, and you like it, and you know it, and you understand it, but just like a bobblehead that nod, nods its head when it, something touches it, but it doesn't actually go and do anything, we as Christians don't want to be people who read verses and just go, mm, and then don't go and actually do anything. And I think this is one of those verses that a lot of people, even particularly in United, one of the reasons why we're doing this is we feel like this is a real need for us to talk about with all the high schoolers, is we might know this and we might be familiar with this, but the question is, are you doing this? Mm. So Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And right there, you get a very clear command that children are to obey their parents. And I know in high school, you don't feel like a child anymore, right? Because you're getting that sense and that taste of freedom like Jacob was talking about. But you still are a child because you're dependent upon your parents. That's biblically what it means to be a child, someone who's dependent upon their parents financially and in order to live and survive. So we get this command that children are to obey, and that word hupakuo in the Greek language literally means... Sorry, hupa what? Hupakuo. Got it. It means to listen under. It's two words. Mm. Hupa means to be under, and then akuo means to listen. So right away, we get a very practical thought. If I'm a child and I'm under my parents, do I listen to my parents? Mm. Do I see myself even under their authority? And then in verse 2... Paul quotes, and he says, honor your father and mother. Do you know where Paul quotes from right there in verse 2? Right off the bat, I don't know where where he quotes from. He quotes from Exodus 20. Do you know what's in Exodus 20? I believe it's the Ten Commandments. It is the Ten Commandments. And so he quotes one commandment, and the commandment is, honor your father and mother. And then in parentheses, you get this is the first commandment Mm -hmm. with a promise, and it's actually number five on the list of ten. And he's, 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 he's saying something very important right here in verse 2, which gets us to your question, that children are to obey their parents, but everyone, even when you're technically no longer a child, needs to honor their parents hmm. for the rest of their life, right? So one of the things that was really helpful for me, even particularly when I was in high school, is when Pastor Bobby would preach on this verse, he preached a sermon that I still remember to this day, 
that I heard when I was a high schooler called Parents Are For Life. And he took us through what it means to honor your father and mother and specifically looked at the Ten Commandments. And one of the things that he helped us to see is the Ten Commandments were not given to just kids. Although we typically make it like a kid's ministry lesson, the Ten Commandments were given to the people of Israel, including the adults. And one of the reasons why you know that is because of what some of the commandments talk about, right? When it says, do not murder, you're not really seeing a lot of kids tempted to murder, right? That's typically an adult kind of a thing. Or do not covet your neighbor's wife. That's not typically a child kind of a thing. We're talking to adults here. So Mm. at first it says, hey, children, here's what you're to do obey. If your parents tell you to do something, you need to listen and do it. But then even if you're no longer a child, your relationship with your parents lasts for the rest of your life. Dude, you got to get good at doing this now. And sure, it might look different in different stages. When I'm a child, it's obedience. As an adult, it's honor. But even as a child, I got to learn how to obey and honor. And one of the things that I, I, I really think people need to think through when we think about this passage is the idea of honor means that I fix in my mind a value upon something. Hmm. So that, to answer your question, honor means that I'm deciding that I'm going to esteem something as, or someone as worthy of something. So like, you know, a lot of times when people hear that, they'll ask questions like, okay, so what do I believe my parents are worthy of? Hmm. Like, do I believe that my parents are worthy of my respect? Do I believe my parents are worthy of my obedience? Do I believe my parents are worthy of my time? And the reality is all of those are wrong questions. And the reason why is because of what it says actually in verse one, I'm to obey and honor my parents in the Lord. Those three words are the key phrase to understand this passage. I honor my parents. We're supposed to honor our parents and obey them, listen to them, esteem them as worthy because I know what God is worthy of. I believe that he is worthy. And so if I believe that God is worthy, then I will honor my parents. I'll listen to them and I'll do what they say. And how you treat your parents is a picture of of what you believe God is worthy of. Mm. I know we don't, we don't think about that sometimes, but it just is. And then in verse 3, you get, this, you, you get this promise because it says that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So, I mean, this is so cool that God promises a blessing for those who obey this commandment, that if you honor and if you obey, life will go better for you. Mm. And so you got to ask yourself, okay, so then do I trust in God? right? Like, do I trust that he actually will fulfill that promise for my good? Another verse that I love just to go along with this is in Proverbs 3, 1 through 2. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. So here is Solomon writing Proverbs, the wisest man to ever live, and he's trying to pass on his wisdom to his son. And he's saying, son, Listen to what I'm telling you. Do what I'm telling you. Keep in your heart what I'm telling you. Because if you do, it will give you a long life filled with peace. And isn't that what we want, Hmm. right? We want peace and we want life. And God's making it very clear that comes through honoring and obeying your father and mother. Hmm. Yeah, I think even just to go back and touch on that word honoring that we talked about, like, yeah, your parents are worthy of honor. Uh, not because of who your parents are, but because of who the Lord is. And so for us to honor them is to think rightly about them in the way that Scripture, in the way that God has told us to think about them, which is as above us, as more important than us, as somebody that we ought to submit to as we submit to the Lord. And so I think, uh, yeah, just even on a mindset way, you can think highly of your parents in a way that like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to listen to them. I'm ready to do that. I'm not going to think negative or, or thoughts that are against them, but instead mm-hmm. I'm going to hold them up. I'm going to esteem them like somebody that I care about, that cares about me and that God has placed over me. I think yeah. fundamentally, mm-hmm. like how you think about them honoring feels like it really starts there. Like, how, yeah. am I, how do I think about my parents? Because I know, I know in my life I've been obedient to my parents doing what they have asked me to do, but I have not done it in a way that was honoring to them mm. uh, by any means. And I, I love that it connects those two things. It's not just obey your parents. It's obey them and honor them here in Ephesians 6. Well, and it's all about my own relationship with the Lord 
of what do I believe that God is worthy of. And I think everybody comes from different backgrounds and different family dynamics, and we've got people who watch or listen to this podcast that do their parents are plugged into this church, their parents are Christians, I know that you come from a family like this, and it, in some cases, it might feel easy to honor your father and mother because you love your father and mother because they love you and your family dynamic is good and it's great. And then I know that we've got other people who watch and listen to this podcast, people in United who feel like they have no idea what that's like hmm. because that is not the background. That is not the dynamic that they come from. Their parents aren't believers. Their parents don't go to church. Their parents are in some ways almost even not fans of them going to church or being Christians, and it feels almost harder to honor your father and mother. And what it all comes back to is, okay, I've got to think about this in the way that I think about my relationship with Jesus. That's how I've got to think about this. What would I give Jesus? Okay, that's going to help me then treat my parents the way that God wants me to treat my parents, Mm. not just the way that I feel like it, are definitely not just the way that I see everybody else doing this. So I don't know if you know how seriously God takes kids honoring their parents. Do you know, like back in the time of Israel, if a child did not listen to their parents and honor them, do you know what would happen to them? Isn't it? Isn't that they would literally get stoned out in a courtyard? Like, Bro, they would get killed. Yeah. So Exodus yeah. 21, verse 17, God says, whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. Mm-hmm. And then Leviticus 20, verse 9 says, for anyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood is upon him. Mm-hmm. So like God takes this so seriously to the point where This is sin, and if you do it, you will die if that's how you continue Mm. in it. Mm. Well, even back in the Ten Commandments, what Paul quotes there in Ephesians, that like this is the first commandment with a promise that he talks about, the promise there is honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord is giving you, which I think is crazy. Here, God is talking to the Israelites and he's like, hey, I'm going to give you this promised land, the the place that you've been waiting for. And he gives them 10 rules, right? 10 commandments for them to follow. And and the one that he sticks like a contingency on and is like, hey, if you want to be here for a long time, Here's the one you need to pay attention to. It's uh, honor your father and mother. And if you know the history of Israel, I mean, they were there for some time, not for a long time. And uh, I I bet, you know, God being true to his word, uh, I bet they weren't being obedient to their their parents. Well, and that is exactly where we're going to as a nation. I was looking up some verses knowing that we were going to talk about this topic. And one of the things the Bible says that we can know we are in the end times because it is when kids disobey their parents. So mm. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Mm. So biblically, this is a mark that things are going from bad to worse when kids start disobeying their parents. And just look around. So many people are disobedient to their parents. They've got attitude when their parents are talking to them. They're not listening. They're rolling their eyes. They're on their phone when their parents are talking to them. That's not honoring. Honoring means I'm giving you my respect. To give you my respect means that I'm going to treat you like you are worthy of me listening to you, like you're worthy of me paying attention to what you're saying to. And if you tell me to do something, I'm going to say, how high do you want me to jump? Mm. I'm going to go and do it, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because I believe what God tells me you are worthy of, which is my honor and my respect. Yeah. Mm. I think that plays well into the next question that you had for us too, right, Joey? Yeah, I mean, kind of with that, how can we – grown honor in our parents. I mean, know that like, you know, I mean, as you just seem to kind of define like what honor our parents looks like, how can we not say stagnant and where we may be wherever that is, but like, how can we, yeah, how can we grow in that? Yeah, I think two things. The first thing that I think is, um, one, you've got to stop separating your relationship with your parents 
from your relationship with the Lord. And so this goes back to kind of what Jacob was talking about. It has to begin in your mind, which is what we were just talking about for a couple of minutes, the way that I think about my relationship with the Lord. So if you're thinking wrongly about your relationship with your parents, that needs to change today. It's not like you're a Christian over here at church, and then when you're at home with your parents, your parents are just the worst. No, 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 no. You don't get to separate these two things in your mind and in your life. You are a Christian, which means you are a little Christ. You follow him day in and day out, wherever you are, whether it's at church, whether it's hanging out with your brothers, hanging out with your sisters in your small group, or at home with your parents all alone by yourself. So it starts in your mind. And then the second thing that I would say is you've got to try to think through real practically. Okay, so what do my parents ask me to do? And then how do I do it? Hmm. Do I do it right away? I know for me, man, one of the things that I so clearly remember is I would always say things to my mom like, hey, mom, where is this? Hey, mom, do you remember where I put this? Hey, mom, have you seen this? And my mom would always ask me questions like, uh, have you looked in your room? And I'd be like, yeah, I looked in my room. I can't find it anywhere. And she'd be like, do I need to come up there? Because if I come up there and I look through your room, well, then you're <laughs> going to get in trouble because I know I'll find it. And the idea was I just didn't really listen well, right? Mm-hmm. They would say something. They would tell me to do something. And I would hear what they said, but I wouldn't actually, like, receive it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't actually, like own it as, okay, this is something as if God, were, if, if God told me to take out the trash, which was one of my chores that I always had a hard time with, how would I go and do that? I would do it to the best of my ability. And there's no way that I would forget to put a new trash bag back in the trash can after I took out the trash. <laughs> I would do it like I believe God is worthy of it. So I think those mm. two things are a great place to start. Mm. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of with that, I mean, it kind of plays along uh, very well with, you know, the last question, but, like, how can I evaluate, yeah, where I am with honoring my parents uh, right now? Like, I mean, yeah. I think evaluation is a uh, an awesome thing to think about uh, in terms of any area of obedience. I think uh, something that we want to be honest about is, like, okay, here's something I need to grow in. How do I, you know, measurably um, look at how I'm doing in that area? The first thing that c- comes to my mind, maybe it feels weird to do. Maybe it might feel a little bit awkward or or whatever, but like nobody's going to be able to evaluate that better than your parents. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. Go to them and ask. Yeah. Go ask, how am I doing yeah. in this? Yep. Um yeah, it's not, we were talking earlier, it's not like, you know, maybe maybe Bible reading where you're like, you can, you can really evaluate, okay, am I doing this daily? How long am I spending? Am I getting deep? And, and there might be some, some marks on your own where you can evaluate. Certainly with, with obedience to your parents, there are going to be those things. Um, am I, you know, keeping up on my chores or whatever? But ultimately, um, in, in terms of obedience, I think, yeah, go ask them. That's very helpful. I feel like, I mean, I feel like, yeah, this is a very simple answer, but definitely, I mean, that makes sense for sure. I think no parent is going to have their kid come to them and say, mom and dad, do you feel like I honor you? Or how can I grow in honoring you? And the mom and dad are not going to want to talk about that. I think your parents, whether they're Christians or not, are going to, every parent wants a good relationship with their kids and every parent understands my kid needs to respect me. Mm. And so if a kid goes to their parents and asks about that and wants to grow in that, dude, that is a great thing for a kid to do. Even just doing that is a showing of honor. Mm. And you better make sure that you follow through with what they actually say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, some built-in accountability there yeah. with that, oh, for yeah. that question. The other thing that comes to my mind is, is that's for obedience, but even on the honoring side, like in our mind, I think uh, just a practical thing when I think about that is how do I think about my parents when they come to my mind or when they ask me to do something? This is true even now in my own heart, right? Like I don't live with my parents there thousands of miles away in a different state. Uh, But even a couple years back, something that I was really convicted about as a grown man with a family was, hey, I still need to honor my parents when when they reach out to me or when I interact with them or, or anything, when somebody else talks about them or when I think back on my, you know, childhood, how do I think of my parents? What thoughts do I allow to stick in my mind? And am I thinking 
highly of them or am I thinking like, oh yeah, I'm frustrated with them or I didn't like how they did this or I don't think this this was a good decision. So I think in your own mind, and this is something that maybe they, you know, if you go ask your parents, how am I doing in this, they won't necessarily be able to comment on is, yeah, how do you think of your parents when they ask you to do something? Does your mind go to good thoughts about them? They love me. They care for me. They've been placed there by the Lord, whatever. That might be a practical thing that you can think of in your own mind. Where does my mind go when I think about my parents? Yeah, and I just think you got to get rid of the pride in your heart. You are not above your parents. Your parents are above you. And one of my favorite stories in the scripture, working with young people, is in Luke chapter 2, where Jesus' parents leave him in Jerusalem (laughs) on a road trip. And I mean, that's every kid's worst nightmare, right? To get left in Costco by your parents. And it's like, (laughs) there's no more snacks, and where do I go? And have Am you I, been left in Costco, Shane? No. Oh, it's traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> you still I actually got to lost. To I got lost at the OC Fair as a kid one year. Wow. Um, I've never shared that story openly. <laughs> no. uh, I d- that did actually <laughs> the happen. The goats came at him. That did actually happen. <laughs> um, but I love that story in Luke chapter 2 when Jesus gets left in Jerusalem because his parents come to him and they find him in the temple. And his mom's like, why did you treat us like this? And, I mean, you're Jesus. You're the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You could have been like, well, Mom, let me explain a thing or two to you. I belong in the temple. I am the Christ. And my Father, he's in heaven. And I could just imagine him looking right at Joseph when he said that. (laughs) But that's not what Jesus does. Jesus just packs it up, and he goes home. And it says that Mary treasured up all these things in her heart Mm -hmm. because Jesus grew in favor and in stature before God and man. So, I, I yeah, I just see like a lot of kids, high school students, have a puffed up attitude towards their parents. They don't listen well. They don't respond well. They roll their eyes. They question what their parents say. And it's like, dude, that's not how you would talk to the Lord. That is not how you would engage with Jesus Christ. So repent of your pride and start treating your parents like the way that God tells you to treat your parents because that's what Jesus modeled for us. So if you want to follow Jesus and be like him, then honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. Dude, Joey, when you think about honoring your parents and just what that's like for you in your own household, I mean, what comes to your mind of like what's what's helpful as a reminder? Where does your mind go when you think on your own about like honoring your parents? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, um, for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, there's like chores where it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I, I, I take out the trash, you know, there's these things I have to do. But then also kind you have of to take like, out the trash as a chore. I do. That's been my chore as, for as long as I can remember. I feel you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like even, um, even just beyond like all the, you know, you know, all the chores and like responsibilities in that sense, which are important. Um, but also with, um, even just with like everything that's going on, just like being real with m- my parents, not, you know, not just like talking to them only when it's, oh, absolutely necessary, at least in my own mind, but like, oh, like I'm just talking about what's going on. Like I'm, I'm asking about what, what they have going on. Mm-hmm. And it, even when, you know, open up the song of the day, like, oh, like, yes, I'm going to hit up my small group, hit up those guys as well, but also, oh, I'm going to go talk to my parents about this too. That's awesome. Yeah, That's why we have you on this podcast, bro, <laughs> because I think one of the things is that we got to say at some point is not only do your parents want your respect, your parents want a relationship, right? Your parents don't want some kid walking around their house like a robot, just do as I say, listen to what I say, now go be obedient. No, your parents want you. I mean, I think one of the things that's just even a helpful way to evaluate is do I only talk to my parents when my parents talk to me? Hmm. Or am I going to my parents being like, mom? How are you? Dad, how's work? What's going on? How's everybody doing? And you're trying to show them honor by just being in a loving relationship with them. Yeah, if you really honor them, you're going to want their opinion on those things. You're naturally like, hey, should I take this job? I'm going to go ask my parents. Should I date this person? I'm going to go ask my parents. Like that That's something that naturally, if you're thinking highly of them, yep. 
you see that they have wisdom, you see that they love and fear the Lord, and they have uh, years of wisdom beyond your own, yeah, you're going to want to go and talk to them. That's mm. awesome. Yeah, when you, you, oh, good. you can't hide things from your parents mm. and say that you're honoring them. Yeah. Mm. So if there's anything that you're hiding and not sharing, you're not honoring them. Yeah. So we were talking about this a little bit before, too. Parents set out a bunch of rules, um, and we were talking a little and wanted to ask you even this idea of, okay, if we, we've talked about honoring our parents, we've got to obey the rules that they've set out. Like, what if our parents have a rule that maybe we don't understand, we don't agree with? Um, how, how is that something that, like, we can... I don't want to say challenge, but bring up to our parents. Like, how do we how do we think about that? Can we ask them about their rules that they have, or is it just like, a, hey, they've said it, and we're done. Like, no, no negotiation, no questioning. Just go do it, whether you like it or not. Like, how do how do we do that? Well, I will answer that, but you should be the one answering that because of your uh, your great stories that you have from your time in high school. But one of the things that I will say on that is. I mean, yeah, we, there's so many different family dynamics. You have a family dynamic that you came from. I have a family dynamic that I came from. My parents got divorced when I was two. My dad got remarried when I was five. And there was just a lot of difficulties that went along with that. Um, but one of the things that I think is so helpful is when we look, I mean, we're doing this series right now at United Life in Babylon. And that first sermon, I talked about Daniel and all that happened in his life and how he was taken to Babylon as a young person and how do you live for Christ in a culture that's against God. That's the whole point of this series. Well, in Daniel, they are trying to get him to compromise in Babylon mm. into sin. And one of the things that Daniel himself did is he resolved, I will not defile myself. I will not give myself over to sin. I'm not going to do what everybody else in my culture is doing. That's a personal conviction that every Christian has to make. No matter what everybody else is doing, no matter what other people tell me to do, I will not sin. But he didn't just, so you guys are the worst. You're a bunch of sinners. I'm not doing that. I'm over here living for God. No, that's not what he did. In Daniel 1, verse 8, it says, But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. That's his personal decision, how he's going to live his life. And then it says, Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. So Daniel makes this decision, but then it's not like he just makes it personally on his own. He goes to the person that's in a form of authority over him at this time, and he says, so, hey, can I do this? And I just think that is such a great model of anytime you find yourself in a position under someone's authority and they're asking you to do things, yeah, whether you don't understand it or whether you feel like, man, I don't even know if that is something that I should do, you can go to that person and you can ask for clarification. And even if you're thinking about doing something else, you could present your idea, your thoughts, your desires to that person and say, hey, well, here's what I think. What do you think? But if I'm in a position of authority under someone, particularly as a kid, I am under my parents, well, unless they're telling me to do something that's sinful, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't like it, even if I don't want to, that's obedience for me to go and do it. Hmm. Yeah, no, I like that. And I think, I think it's helpful because, um, yeah, when I think back to being in high school, there certainly were rules that my parents had that I didn't agree with, um, and I wasn't always exemplary in the way that I would disagree with those things. And looking back, I mean, that there certainly is a, a respectful and kind way to go ask a question, and then there's a way to go, you know, ask a question saying that somebody's wrong. And I think even the story, like the reason why you said I, I should be answering the question, I think, is going back to high school. And when I, yeah, like my junior year, I had overloaded my schedule. I had just, I had just taken on a ton and I was managing it well. I was, I, I think I was doing excellent in all of those things. But my parents looking in said, hey, you are too busy. And one of the rules that they said um, my junior year was you're not allowed to go to small groups anymore. And uh, I was I was hurt by that. I was really frustrated. I was super bummed. And uh, I even like initially my response is like, hey, like I'm a Christian, like I have to do this. This is where I need to be. And and um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily remember any conversations in particular, but I know that the initial response to that was questioning, but not questioning in a respectful, mm. honoring way. It was, uh, it was, you know, you're wrong. I need to be able to do this, trying to like plead my my case almost. Um, but I think it's cool that uh, going back even to Daniel and thinking about that, there's the right thing, which, you know, in for me, junior year of high school, yeah, I'm called to love my one another's, to talk about the sermon, all those things, and and small groups was the way to fulfill that. Um, but ultimately, it wasn't the only way to fulfill that. And it was even in that scenario, seeking wisdom from my small group leader at a time that was at that time that was super helpful to see and understand that. Where I'm all fired up to like rebel against my parents because I'm thinking like, oh, there's a clear black and white, like my parents telling me something to do something that's sinful. And, you know, here's what the Bible says. And therefore, like, oh, here's the situation where I am allowed to disobey my parents. And I was just thinking about that so incorrectly that that's not how I should have gone about that Mm -hmm. in that time. Totally. Yeah. Joey, any other questions that you've got? Yeah, well, I think um, you just one more question. Um, you kind of going off of that. I mean, you know, praise the Lord. I had, I do have godly parents who do fear the Lord. Um, but you know, for I bet those, you Christine and Mike will watch this podcast or listen <laughs> to it at some point. I think, I think, I think they will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for for those who don't have Christian parents, you know, how can you help? How how can you help them? You kind of think about on your parents in this way. And yeah, for those who don't have Christian parents, how can they still honor them? Yeah, I think honoring is the best way that you could actually evangelize your non-Christian parents. Mm. Even more so than the words that you share is the way that you live. That's going to showcase a difference that Christ has made in your life, you know. So I would say the honoring principles of what we're talking about here today apply to a Christian and a non-Christian. We're not in regards to their parents. We're not just talking about, hey, yeah, your family goes to Compass Bible Church and everything's peachy keen. No, we made it very clear. There's a lot of different family dynamics. God's word applies to you, whether your parents are Christians or whether your parents are non-Christians. You're doing this in the Lord. You're not doing this in the Murray. I'm not doing this in the Ruland because I'm a Ruland. That's why I honor my father and mother. No, I'm doing it because I'm in the Lord and God wants me to do it. Yeah, and I do think, yeah, all these commands, its they're not contingent, right? Like we've been talking about, they're not contingent upon who our parents are. Um, and I think there is an encouragement to share with somebody who has, I don't know what, something happened downstairs. Um, I, I think there's an encouragement to share with somebody who has non-Christian parents, like even as we think about evangelism with people at our school or whatever it is. And um, we might say like, oh yeah, like your conduct's got to be on point. Like you want to make sure you're above reproach in front of those people. So when you, you're sharing the gospel with them, you're not disqualified by your own actions. I mean, your parents, you live with them. Yep. You're there with them 24 seven. So if you're claiming Christ and they don't know Christ, and then they are seeing the way they're going to see clearly how you live better than probably anybody else on this earth, Yeah, right? They're going to see that firsthand. They're going to be able to testify clearly to an old Joey and a new Joey. Yep. Or if you're sharing that with somebody else, like, hey, they, they should be able to testify to the old and the new. Let's make sure we're above reproach. And even this idea or this specific topic of obedience to parents is going to be something super clear in their mind. Yeah. And praise the Lord, like that was, when I was saved, I, I went from incredibly disrespectful to my parents and not wanting to honor them at all. And the Lord convicted me of that. And I recall conversations with my parents and them saying like, yeah, can't deny from here to there hmm there's been a change mm. in your life and and praise the lord that that is the case but yeah i think maybe no better way to witness to your parents off the bat than seeing that change yeah we can just end with these two verses real quick in matthew 15 verses 3 through 9 jesus reinforces god's standard of kids obeying their parents it says He answered them, why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? And Jesus is exposing the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. For God commanded, 
honor your father and your mother. Jesus quotes from Exodus 20 right there. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. And then he quotes Exodus 21 right there. But you say, and here the Pharisees are thinking that they're all spiritual. If anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God. He need not honor his father. Father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. See, God wants kids to grow up and even get to a place where they take care of their parents, Hmm. if need be. So as a kid grows up, it's almost like he needs to work thinking he's gaining money to someday help his parents if his parents end up in a spot where the kid actually needs to help him. Mm. And here the Pharisees were in this time, and this is what Jesus is exposing. They think they're all spiritual over here. They wouldn't give their money to their parents Mm. because they're saying, oh, I'm going to give this money to God, and God's more important than my parents. And they were excusing that by saying, oh, well, that's an okay exception. You don't need to honor your father and mother. And Jesus calls them hypocrites. Mm. And he says, your guys' heart is far from me. You're not obeying. And then here's a real chilling verse on this. We could end with this one. 1 Timothy 5, 3 through 8 says, honor widows who are truly widows, which means that someone, their spouse has passed away and they've got nobody else in their family to take care of them. The church needs to take care of them in that example. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them, and listen to this, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household, and how? To make some return to their parents. How is godliness seen? By kids giving money to their parents Mm. in this example. Like, the Bible is so practical. It's not saying, hey, you got your relationship with God over here. That's great. Good job. It's okay if you're a little disobedient to your parents over here. No, this passage goes on to say, listen to this. It says, if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, He has denied the faith, and he's worse than an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get worse than an unbeliever? Yikes. You're like, dude, that is intense. And here's God saying that. Two people claiming the name of Christ, but yet not showing practical respect, honor, and obedience to their parents. Mm -hmm. And God's commentary on that in his word is so clear. Yeah, they didn't have retirement. They didn't have, like, put money away. For sa- in savings for later, it was straight up like your job, yep. care for your parents. Yep. Hey, well, Joey, thank you so much for being on this podcast today. It was great to have you here. Mm, of course. It's been, it's been a great time. And bro, as you leave, one last encouragement that we would give you is just to be mindful of hedges mm. and be careful. All right. <laughs> it is a dangerous world out there. Tar is not your friend. It's your enemy. So live on the lookout. Walk the line. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> United, love you, we love you. Thanks so much for watching this episode, listening on Spotify, and we'll see you next week for another one.